Hello, this is Amjad Al Mandilawi from Baghdad, Iraq, presenting a session on mitral commissurotomy. The session is comprised of two parts. This part will discuss patient selection and to be followed by a second part which involves the technique itself. Percutaneous mitral commissurotomy has a different abbreviation and nomenclature in literature. In this uh, session, we will use the first one, which is PMC. It refers to opening the fuse commissure using a ballon. The most advanced ballon used is the Inouye ballon. When selecting the patient for mitral stenosis, we have to, be, to, keep, to bear in mind that it's not very useful when the mechanism of MS is restricted valve mobility due to extreme valve fibrosis or severe subvalvular disease with mild commissural effusion. That is what is seen in degenerative valve disease. So how to assess mitral stenosis? This is usually done by echocardiography. The, fir the first measurement to be taken is the pressure gradient. And this measurement is done by continuous wave Doppler is the preferred method to ensure recording of the maximal velocities. Doppler gradient is assessed using apical window in most cases, as it allows for parallel alignment of the ultrasound beam with mitral inflow. It is better to guide the Doppler beam to the highest flow velocity identified by color Doppler. The mean gradient is the relevant hemodynamic finding. The heart rate at which gradient are measured should always be reported. In a patient with atrial fibrillation, mean gradient should be calculated as the average of five cardiac cycles. Gradient, although reliable, is not the best marker for the severity of MS since it depends on many variables, including the mitral valve area, heart rate, the cardiac output, and the associated mitral regurgitation. So it should always be correlated with other variables. The other way is to assess mitral valve area by planimetry. Theoretically, measuring mitral valve area using 2D echo of the mitral valve orifice has the advantage of direct measurement of the area and is not affected by chamber compliance or associated valve lesions. It is measured by direct tracing of mitral orifice, including open commissures on parasternal short axis view and best measured at the leaflet tips. The measurement planes should be perpendicular to the orifice. Gain setting is important and should be optimized. Excessive gain setting may cause underestimation of valve area, especially when the leaflet tips are dense or calcified. Sometimes it may not be feasible because of poor acoustic window or severe distortion of valve anatomy. Another limitation of a planimetry is that it requires technical expertise. The measurement plane must be optimally positioned on the mitral valve orifice. orifice. A 3D guided biplane image is useful in optimizing the position of the measurement plane. A pressure half time, it is the time required for velocity to drop to half the peak pressure. Mitral valve area is calculated using the formula 220 over the pressure half time, and this is usually calculated automatically by the device. The Doppler signal used is the same as for measurement of mitral gra gradient, and a special attention should be paid to the deceleration slope. Here we measure the mean mitral gradient, and the mitral valve area is measured by the pressure half time method and it equals 2.76 cm square. The pitfalls of pressure half time is that it affected by the Doppler signal how optimal it is and affected by mark tachycardia, the presence of aortic regurgitation or in the presence of very high LA pressure and is not very reliable immediately following PMC due to abrupt change in LA compliance and we have to give a special attention to the deceleration slope, especially when there is a bimodal or concave deceleration curve. Other method for the assessment of mitral valve area that are less frequently used are the continuity equation and the PISA method. 
evaluation of the valve anatomy is very important because of its implication on decision making about intervention. Commissural fusion is an important feature to distinguish rheumatic from degenerative mitral stenosis. A complete fusion of both commissures usually indicates severe rheumatic MS. Although sometimes we can see severe rheumatic MS that is due to valve rigidity and shortening and subcuspal fusion, as seen in this case, despite the commissures are opened. This is usually seen in restenosis after previous commissurotomy. This case is a degenerative mitral stenosis with heavy calcification of the base of the leaflets and the mitral annular calcification. Important information about valve anatomy is to assess leaflet thickening, leaflet mobility, the shortening of the cordal structures and its thickening, and calcification. All these parameters are included in the Wilkins score. The lower the score, the better, the better the immediate and late result of PMC. A score of 8 over 16 and less is associated with best outcomes. Multiple echocardiographic views are required to assess the score. Here we can see long axis view of different patients with different degree of mitral thickening. The one that all, all of these cases we have done PMC for them, but the best result are, is achieved in the one in the left upper, in the right upper corner that has the lowest score with good leaflet mobility, only one flick of calcification. This is short axis view of different uh, patients. And here we can see the apical view of, again, different patients. So we need multiple views to assess the severity and the score of the patient, of the leaflet. What is not included in the Wilkins score is the degree of commissural calcification. Surata et al. published a study in the Heart Journal where commissural calcification was graded from 0 to 4. A lower score was a predictor of a good outcome. Associated lesions should also be sought during echocardiography. The presence of mitral regurgitation has important implication for the choice of intervention. And its quantification is essential because more than mild MR is a relative contraindication for PMC. Following PMC, some MR may occur and the mechanism of mitral regurgitation following PMC is also important to assess because leaflet tear may warrant surgery where some central or commissural mitral regurgitation may be more benign. A large thrombus inside the left atrium is an absolute contraindication for PMC. Transesophageal echocardiography is sometimes needed to assess valve anatomy, but is particularly important and is indicated in patients with atrial fibrillation to exclude LA thrombus. In this patient, we can see severe mitral stenosis with a spontaneous echo contrast in the left atrium. When the appendage was viewed, we can see a large thrombus inside the appendage. Sometimes, in such cases, we can try a, three, a six weeks to three months of oral anticoagulation and TE is repeated again. The presence of thrombus in the LA appendage is a, is a relative contraindication of PMC. In this case, the thrombus was persistent despite anticoagulation, but we managed to do the PMC with caution. Other things by echocardiography to assess are the consequences of mitral stenosis, including LA enlargement and the PA pressure. So in conclusion, a patient is selected for PMC if he or she has significant mitral stenosis, usually moderate to severe and is usually symptomatic. The valve anatomy should be suitable for commissurotomy with low score, whatever scoring system is used, and there should be no more, no more than mild mitral regurgitation. And the ally should be clear of a thrombus, and there should not, not be other lesions that require surgery, whether valve or coronaries. And thank you.